a tall figure carrying a baseball bat. Little pig, little pig! This silhouette is enslaving other survivors in the apocalypse. Let me in! The person is none other than Negan, the leader of the Saviors, who is visiting Rick's community for the first time. Spencer opens the door. Uh, who are you? Oh, you better be joking. While they converse, Rick arrives, his eyes still filled with sorrow and anger. Do not make me have to ask. Reluctantly, Rick opens the gate. Megan quickly regains his confident smile, saying he came because he missed Rick. At that moment, a zombie approaches from behind Negan. He tells Rick to watch and effortlessly dispatches the zombie with his baseball bat. Rick doesn't look at Negan but scans the people he brought along. There are over 20 of them, thankfully. Daryl is among them and still alive. But he looks like he's been through a lot, causing Rick both heartache and guilt. Negan's voice came again. You give me tribute, and I'll help you kill zombies. It's a deserved reward. Then Negan enters the community making Rick carry his baseball bat. Rick has never been one to take a loss, but resisting could get all the people here killed. And that's something he doesn't want to see. Megan came in and was struck by how rich the neighborhood looked. As Rick turns back, he calls out to Daryl with concern, but Negan sternly stops him. Megan warns Rick not to look at Daryl or talk to him, otherwise, he'll make Rick personally remove the body part from Daryl. Rick can do nothing but comply. Negan wasn't here today to have fun, but to sweep up supplies with his men. Rick hastened to say that they had already divided half the supplies as agreed and could just take them away. Negan corrects him instantly, saying that everything they have belongs to him, and he decides what they take. You heard the man. Move out! He then leads his group into the community like bandits. The residents, unfamiliar with Negan's madness, are helpless. Negan asks Rick to give him a tour inside. Once they are gone, Dwight stops Rosita and takes away her and Spencer's guns, along with all the weapons in their car. Dwight orders Rosita to bring Daryl's motorcycle, though she claims it's not in the community. Dwight insisted on the motorbike and even took her hat. Rosita cannot afford to provoke these thugs and has to go out to find Daryl's motorcycle since she knows where it is. The saviors were frantically ransacking the community, taking away many household items, including furniture and mattresses. Megan leisurely watches his man, in a delightful mood, claiming he is reasonable. That's when the men found a camera and gave it to Negan. Negan becomes interested and starts watching a recording Deanna made of Rick's group when they first arrived. He mocks Rick's former fierce appearance with a big beard, saying he wouldn't dare mess with that man. Then Negan points the camera at Rick again, teasing him. You are not that bearded man anymore, are you? Rick feels indignant and furious at being humiliated like this. Negan inquires about Maggie, teasingly saying that she became a widow despite being so beautiful, and he wonders if she's lonely. Hearing Negan taunt Maggie, Rick's eyes fill with rage. Rick quickly averts his gaze, not wanting any further trouble, but he tightly grips his baseball bat, afraid he might lose control and attack this maniac. Finally, Negan expresses his desire to meet Maggie. Gabriel introduces himself with a smile on his face and he tells Negan that Maggie is dead. Gabriel led Negan to the graveyard to verify it. And indeed, there was a wooden sign with Maggie's name on it. Looking at the graves, Negan goes back to his four regretful mourning, stating that he had no choice in Glenn's and their deaths. Rick listened with a serious expression. Gabriel patted the dust on his leg. It was obvious that he had faked this grave. Gabriel knew he couldn't let Negan know that Maggie had gone to the hilltop, or else he might be seen as colluding with them. While Negan kept talking, a gunshot was heard from inside the community. Negan's face turned grim, anticipating that there might be a need for killing today. Carl was the one who fired the shot. According to the agreement, the saviors were supposed to take only half of their supplies, but they completely ransacked their house, which made him very angry. Rick was anxious and quickly tried to persuade his son to put down the gun. <laughs> oh, really, kid? You should go before you find out how dangerous we all are. Well, pardon me, young man, and excuse the shit out of my goddamn French, but did you just threaten me? Rick! standing nearby, was sweating, afraid of provoking this madman. Surprisingly, Negan didn't get angry and showed patience with Carl, not making a fuss over the incident. Carl eventually handed the gun over to his father. Negan picked up the pistol and said, You know what Rick, you guys have too many guns, and that's not good. You guys should have a lot of guns yourselves. 
Plus you got a bunch of guns from destroying one of my strongholds earlier. All of these together, I can't imagine how many guns there are. Megan decided to take all the guns from the community, not leaving a single one behind. This was unexpected for Rick. Even the rocket launcher fell into Negan's hands. Negan also thought about the team he sent out earlier. Probably blown to bits by this very weapon, a woman responsible for guarding the weapons was brought out by Negan's men because they found two handguns missing from the register. Rick's expression changed as it was evident that someone had secretly taken and hidden the guns. Negan's face turned even darker, knowing that someone was secretly hoarding weapons, meaning there were those who wanted to resist. If they can't find the gun, the armory keeper, Olivia, she could be killed and others could face the same fate. Rick urgently gathered all the people from the community to explain the seriousness of the situation. He reluctantly told them that they were now captives and Olivia's life was at stake. However, everyone in attendance remained silent, no one confessing to taking the guns. Rick goes on to say that most of you weren't there and don't know what these people are like, but right now we need to keep everyone alive and give them what they want so we can survive. Aaron's boyfriend stood up and asked how they could get out of this situation later if they gave their guns to the saviors. Rick knew that everyone wanted to resist and not be enslaved, but he helplessly explained that they couldn't escape now. Now the chief is Negan, not him. Eugene pointed out that some people hadn't shown up, and they might be the ones who took the missing guns. Rick immediately thought of Spencer, as expected. They found the missing guns hidden in a compartment in Spencer's room. Negan took the last two handguns and was finally ready to leave the community. Rosita returned after searching for the motorcycle. At that moment, Rick noticed Michonne hiding and asked Negan for some time to talk to her. Negan turned his head, seeing Michonne, and then refused Rick's request. No. Rick said that because he knew Michonne was out hunting today and was carrying a gun, Rick once again lowered his stance and in a pleading tone asked Negan to let him talk to Michonne. Negan was satisfied with this and agreed. Rick hurriedly ran to Michonne and asked her to hand over the rifle. Michonne had always used a katana and went hunting to practice with the gun, always prepared for revenge. Rick could only plead again that if they found the gun someone would die. Soon, Michonne and Rick walked over together. Michonne didn't even look at Negan but noticed Daryl. Rick quickly explained that Michonne had been out hunting, and the gun had been on the watchtower, so it wasn't stored in the armory. Negan was pleased with Rick's initiative and praised him for doing well. Rick also took the opportunity to say that they've realized that Negan is the boss and just want to beg you to keep Daryl. Negan bluntly replied that it was impossible. Rick was left speechless. Negan continued, saying that perhaps if Daryl came to him and begged, he might consider it. Both of them looked at Daryl, but Daryl simply turned his head away. He wouldn't beg that bastard. It was out of the question. Daryl? Negan stated that Daryl didn't want to and he couldn't blame him. Afterwards, Negan reminds Rick that if they don't have something interesting in the next tribute, someone will die. Especially no more guns. Having said all that, Negan instructed his men to take the deer, and they headed back home for dinner. Michonne, feeling upset, dropped the deer and left without a word. Dwight took Daryl's motorcycle, and the saviors finally left. Rick stood there, staring into the distance, looking at his captured brother. He had a burning rage inside him but didn't dare to resist. Rick didn't want anyone else to die, and now even the weapons for resistance had been taken away. Later, Rick found Spencer and told him about the guns, but Spencer seemed very angry, and Rick entered his room. Rick was speechless. Olivia could be killed and he cared more about whether Rick had entered his room or not. Rick continued, I don't blame you for hiding the guns, but hoarding food and liquor is truly despicable. It's your luck to live behind these walls, and it's also your luck to have us. With that said, Rick turned to leave. Spencer said, Yeah, we're really lucky. You brought us to this paradise. I guess Glenn and Abraham were also lucky. Ha! Hearing that, Rick stopped in his tracks. Anger surged through his heart. You say anything like that again to me. I'll break your jaw, knock your teeth out. You understand? Say yes. Yes. How dare this ignorant fool mock them? Spencer's always had a problem with Rick. His mother was the founder, so he believed he should be the leader of the community. But now, these outsiders had taken over, without anyone noticing. Rosita looked around, then reached into the wheel of a car and pulled out a pistol. It was the gun Rosita had found on a walker when she went out to search for the motorcycle, but it had no bullets. That night, Rosita stood outside Eugene's door. Rosita wanted to kill Negan to avenge Abraham. 
Make me a bullet.